In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a correlation matrix by using Microsoft Excel. I will show you how to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient values for each association, and I'll also show you how to color code each cell to represent the strength of each correlation. If you find this tutorial useful, please consider giving it a like as it really does help support the channel. Now let's jump into Excel and get started. I've already got some example data entered into my sheet. What I have are 10 different variables or measures entered into separate columns. And these variables were measured in 19 different participants. So each participant's data is entered on a separate row. What I want to do is to create a correlation matrix which contains the Pearson correlation coefficient values between each of my 10 different variables. Perhaps the easiest way to create a correlation matrix in Excel is to use the data analysis tool pack. This is an add-on created by Microsoft to provide data analysis tools for statistical analyses. To install the tool pack, go to File, Options, then click on Add-ins. At the bottom, you want to manage the Excel add-ins and click the Go button. Then ensure you tick the Analysis Tool Pack add-in and click OK. Now when you click on the Data ribbon, you should see a Data Analysis button in a subsection called Analyze. Now we are ready to create the correlation matrix. To do this, click on the Data Analysis button at the top, and from the list you want to select Correlation and click OK. For the input range, I need to select the cells containing all of my data I want to include in the analysis. So I'll click the up arrow button, then I will click and drag to highlight all of my data. And note, I will also highlight the labels in the first row. I'll then press enter on my keyboard to enter this data into the analysis. Next, I need to tell Excel how my data are organized. Basically, are the variables listed in separate columns or separate rows? If you look at my example, you can see that each variable is in a separate column. So I will select the columns option. And because I highlighted the labels in my first row, I will also check this option here. If you don't have any labels, then leave this option unchecked. I strongly suggest that you do have labels as this will make things a lot easier when it comes to interpreting the results of the correlation matrix. Finally, I need to tell Excel where I want the correlation matrix to be entered. The first option will allow me to select an area within the sheet where I want the results to be placed. The second option will save the results in a new sheet. And the final option will mean the results will be saved in an entirely new Excel document. I'll select the second option and call the new sheet results. Then I will click the OK button to run the analysis. So as you can see, I now have a correlation matrix entered into a new sheet. I'll now interpret the results so you can understand them a bit better. At the top row, you can see each of my variables listed from one to 10. The same can be seen in the first column. Then the numbers in the table represent the Pearson correlation coefficient values. For example, this cell here is the correlation coefficient value for the relationship between variable one and variable four. And this cell is the correlation coefficient value for the relationship between variable five and variable eight. So what are the Pearson correlation coefficient values? I've discussed these in quite a bit more detail in a separate video, so I suggest you check that out if you want to learn more, but I'll give you a brief overview here. The correlation coefficient is a value that ranges from plus one to negative one. A value of zero means there is no linear correlation between the two variables. A value of plus one means there is a perfectly positive linear correlation between the two variables. In other words, as one variable increases, so does the other. You can see in the matrix that any time there is a correlation between the same variable, the correlation coefficient value is plus one. This is because if you plot the two values with exactly the same values against each other, then you will always get a perfectly positive linear correlation. A value of negative one means there is a perfectly negative linear correlation between the two variables. So as one variable increases, the other tends to decrease. Also note that only half of the matrix is complete. And this is because the results would be the same if these empty cells were calculated. If you'd prefer to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient values yourself, you can do so by using the correl function. For example, say I wanted to calculate the correlation coefficient between variables one and five. In a new cell, I will enter equals correl, open bracket, then I will highlight the data for variable one, then I'll add a comma, and next I'll highlight the data for variable five. 
and finally I will close the bracket and press enter. Notice how the correlation coefficient value is the same as in the matrix. If you wanted to go a step further and calculate a p-value for the test to see if the results are significant, then I have shown how to do this in a separate video tutorial, so I suggest you refer to that if you are performing hypothesis testing. Finally, before I finish, I will show you how to colour code each cell based on the coefficient values. To achieve this, we can take advantage of Excel's conditional formatting. I'll firstly highlight all of the data in the matrix, then I'll go to Home, Conditional Formatting, then I will select to create a new rule. For the rule type, I will select the top option, which is to format all of the cells based on their values. I'll then change the format style to a three color scale. For the minimum part, I will change the type to number and the value to be negative one. Then I will change the color to red. I'll then do a similar process to the midpoint, but change the number to zero and the color to white. And finally, I will change the maximum number to one and the color to blue. So what this conditional formatting rule is doing is saying that any cells with a correlation coefficient value at negative one, their cells will be colored red. The cells with a value of zero will be colored white and the cells with a value of plus one will be colored blue. And because this is a color gradient, any values in between these points will have a shade of color that represents their correlation coefficient value. I'll click OK to apply this rule. As you can see, the cells have changed color. I can easily see that the correlation between variables four and five are the strongest negative correlations because it is the cell with the darkest shade of red. Also, the correlation between variable three and variable seven has the strongest positive linear correlation because it is colored in the darkest shade of blue. So you can see that applying colors to your matrix through conditional formatting can be very useful when interpreting your results. And that brings me to the end of this tutorial. You now know how to create a correlation matrix as well as coloring the cells according to the coefficient values by using Microsoft Excel. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.